بنرحب بحضراتكم على قناة إدارة المشاريع Learn Project Management واليوم إن شاء الله الاختبار الثاني من سلسلة محاضرات Method of Constructions الاختبارات اللي بنقدمها عمليا في المعمل لمساعدة الطلبة والمهندسين اللي ما عندهمش فرصة إن يروحوا معامل فالاختبار الأولين كان تنسايل كومبرسيف سترينس على الكونكريت الخرسانة اللي هم ده إن شاء الله هيكون الكومبرسيف سترينس أوف سيلندريكال كونكريت سبيسمن يعني كسرة عينة أسطوانية من الخرسانة في ماكينة بتاعت طبعا الكسرة هي والكومبرسيف سترينس ده يعني طبعا بيتم على العينة الأسطوانية في الكومبريشن تيست ماشين يعني ماشين بتحط جواها الأسطوانة وبيتم كسرها تمام و بيتحسب ازاي is calculated from the failure load divided the cross sectional area resisting the load and report in units of pound force per square inch اللي هي PSI or ميجا باسكال يعني بيتم وضع العينة جوة الماكينة وبيتم طبعا الضغط عليها بقوة بالباسكال او الميجا باسكال تمام لحد ما العينة يتم كسرها اللي هي failure load طبعا الاسترينس طبعا يوجلي جيفز ان اوفر اول بيكتشر بيعطي طبعا معلومات عن الكواليتي مدى جوده الخرسانه تمام بنستخدمها طبعا في اي استراكشرز والكومبريسيف تيست اوف ذا كونكريت سبيسمن از موست وايدلي يوز طبعا مستخدم كتير جدا جدا في كتير من المعامل وبيتم كسر الخرسانه على سبعة ايام او على 28 يوم حسب المواصفات فده بيحدد لك مواصفات الخرسانه اللي حضرتك بتستخدمها خلونا نروح كده على المعمل ونشوف التجربة عملي إن شاء الله للاستفادة وتابعونا. Alright, good afternoon. Uh, today we're going to go over how to cap and break a 4x8 concrete cylinder. So, the day of testing, or ideally the day before testing, you'll want to cap these at least two hours before testing, but you can cap as early as you want. So let's go into the cap. These are our sulfur pots. They should be plugged in, set to 265 degrees. Don't mess with the temperature. It's fine where it is. You're going to want to put on some protection in that stuff. Again, 265 degrees. Not something you want to take a bath in. We've got... We'll get a working apron. We also have arm protection. This usually has a tie on it and also gloves. We'll get better gloves in here too. That's also right-handed. Left-handed. Bring your cylinder over here. What we're going to do is fill this recessed area in here most of the way up with sulfur. You will then lower your cylinder down so that it's sitting in the sulfur, but not touching the bottom. So you want a slight gap there. To make it easier to get the cylinder out after we put the sulfur on, put a little bit of oil. That's probably a little much. These are our sulfur pots. This is the ladle you're going to use. You're going to want to stir up the sulfur until it's a uniform consistency. Now, I've just been using this one, so it's pretty uniform. This one, oh, well, that's pretty non-uniform, but we just filled that one, so we'll leave that one be. Take a ladle. You don't need to fill it all the way. Pour it in. That's a good amount. Take your sulfur, or your uh, cylinder. Ah. See that? We had a little hardened piece of sulfur fall in there. So you're going to want to flip that out using another chip of sulfur. Brush off the bottom this time. And lower it down. If you don't want to risk doing that, you can just let the sulfur harden in the mold and then hammer it out. And also, if something goes wrong with the sulfur, with the capping, you can always break it off and try again. You're going to look and wait for the sulfur to harden all around the cylinder and then lift up. You should get something pretty smooth. It's okay if something breaks off 
near the end so long as it doesn't break into the cylinder. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Lower it down and hold it. The more of these you do at once, the uh, longer it's going to take for the uh, sulfur to harden because the base starts getting hotter and hotter. And you can see it's still a little liquid there. We're going to wait for that to harden. All right. <coughs> Lift up. And we're good to go. Now when you're done capping, take the ladle out and check the level of the pot. If you look in there, you can see we're a little more than halfway down, so we're going to refill it. Take a scoop. Pull out a bag here. Scoop some sulfur. Pour it in. You can fast forward through this, I can. And then cover. That way there's sulfur for everybody and we don't end up running out. Alright, as I said, you'll want to do these at least a couple of hours before breaking. However, we've got a couple already to go here. You want to measure the diameter in two places and take the average. I think we can show, I don't know that we can easily show. Yeah, if you need, if you need help using the calipers, come see me. This isn't the kind of thing that lends it to a video. Now I've already taken the average here, and it came out to right around 4 inches. So I wrote down that average. The calipers, by the way, are stored in this box in this drawer. Make sure they find their way back. This is the compression test machine. You'll notice a series of spacers in here. There should be too big and too small or three big. You should be able to slide your cylinder in with about a finger's worth gap, more or less. These need to be flush against each other on the top of this. You can't have a gap. So you can't just, you can't spin this down to close the gap. You can't have that gap there. If you do, all the weight, all the compressive force of that big cylinder is going to be carried by that little, little steel rod and that can uh, fracture. So if you need to, loosen this up, add spacers, and then tighten it up again. Right. Tell them not to bring, ever go above that. This here is the maximum this uh, platform here can rise. If you, if you try to force it above that, you'll jam the equipment, and then we need to go get a uh, car jack and force it back down. Don't do that. Now, when you're breaking a concrete cylinder, you need to get safety goggles. This can't throw concrete, so follow me over here. <coughs> Just clean up a couple pairs here. <laughs> get the water off that. Yeah, that's not going to work. But you want, you want eye protection. Even though I wear glasses, I usually grab a pair of these because it's a, uh, you know, a couple hundred dollars for the glasses, buck fifty for these. Same with the sulfur. Wear eye protection if possible. Wouldn't hurt. Yeah, you really don't want to get sulfur in your eye. This is the 
compression test machine. What will happen is the black needle, as you load, the black needle will rise and push this red needle up. When the cylinder breaks, the black needle will drop off, the red needle will stay where it is and let you tell, know the peak load. Each big tick mark is 5,000 pounds. So that's 25,000 pounds, that's 20,000 pounds, that's 15,000 pounds, 10, and so on. The little tiny ones are 500 pound increments. So using that, say we broke here, I'm going to try to get it to stop there. That's two little tick marks below 50. So 50 minus 2 times 500 is 1,000. Is 1, so 50,000 minus 1, 49,000 pounds would be our uh, failure load. You'll want to make sure this is all zeroed before you start testing. It should be. You don't need to get the red level, lever all the way to zero. It'll get picked up by the black one as it goes. Four switches here. This is the on-off switch, pretty self-explanatory. This lever here engages and disengages the pump. You bring it up to engage the pump, that'll start causing this platform here to rise. You bring it down to disengage when you're done testing. This lever here is the course adjustment knob. You notice we've got a gap between the cylinder and the compression head here. To close that up, bring this to the left, it'll rise the platform up as quickly as it can. Once you start loading, however, you're going to want to bring this all the way to the right and use this fine adjustment knob to control your speed. You want to go about 5,000 pounds every 10 seconds for a 4x8 cylinder. So, let's load. On. Engage the pump. Course adjustment. And that's as fast as it goes. You can visibly see it moving, so we call that fast. You don't want to see slow. All right, watch the needle for movement. The needle's moving. Bring it over to the, uh, all the way to the right and use the fine adjustment knob. You want to pass about one big tick mark every 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to slow it down a bit. Two, three, I'll wait until it gets to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, again. And two, a little faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close enough. And you can see it's loading. You, uh, you people with three KSI mixes should break around 35,000 uh, pounds. If you're at a uh, five KSI, you're going to be closer to uh, 60 to uh, 65,000 pounds. This mix is going to be a little shy of 5,000, I believe. We're at 28 days, and you can see it's going. You can see the concrete crumbling there. You can disengage the pump at this point to stop the test. And then turn off the uh, cylinder, or the uh, machine. Now, if you're at a higher strength, your brake will be more sudden. It'll tend to throw concrete. We want to read this. We can see there's 50, 55, 60. We're one little tick mark above 60, so that's 60,500 pounds. Force divided by area gives compressive stress. When you're done with these, you want to record your stress, clean up, put your cylinders in a bucket, and take it out to the dumpster. بنشكر شكر حضراتكم thank you so much and see you in the next lectures واختبار جديد ان شاء الله من اختبارات خرسانة وهيكون في مفاجآت كتيرة جدا ومعلومات وكتب لإخواننا الطلبة والمهندسين خالص تحياتي
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thanks so much and see you in the next lecture.